Hi, this video is about the problem with everyman AI agents. These are overhyped and they have been and will continue to be underwhelming. And I'm explain what they are, why they were well, will underwhelm and really how to build max power AI agents. AI agents that actually do far more than what these are capable of or will be capable of. There is a lot of promises coming from big tech companies about uh, every man AI agents essentially. So I think um, kind of the start of this, and so what I mean by every man AI agent, I, ba I basically mean like random people, random guys, non-technical people can build their own AI agents and they're gonna be everywhere and people are gonna make whatever they want and that, that's gonna be cool and that's really gonna be the future. And there's a whole host of reasons why um, for the most part, this will not be accurate. There's, there's, uh, I think there's going to be a small amount of this that makes sense, but in general, that's going to be the exception and not the rule. So I don't know if you remember custom GPTs. Do you? If you don't, that's okay because they came out and they were basically a flop because uh, it's not that easy to build AI agents that work really well. Microsoft has recently talked about this. I believe Salesforce has talked about this and there's other companies that have talked about basically putting AI agent building in the hands of the people. And it sounds really nice. It sounds really good. It sounds really empowering. Go people. Uh, but it is not very practical. And again, I'm going to explain that. Um, basically, there, even some of the no and low code versions of this uh, I think will underwhelm. I think the closer you get to a real professional building the AI agent, the the better they will be. Um, and I think a lot of the thought process on this in a variety of places, especially in Silicon Valley, is leaning heavily on OpenAI. Um, I'll, I'll, there's tons of people out there. This is just blows my mind how how obviously flawed this thinking is that, oh, now we have O1, now we can build agents. Hey, we could build a, it, it's basically GPT-4 uh, that's tuned a little bit for logic uh, and put into a chain of thought reasoning, which we've known about and had had you know information on for two years. You could do basically something very, very close to 01. You could build good AI agents when you build them properly with GPT-4 since GPT-4 came out in 2023, in April of 2023. So, the idea that oh now and they put a fancy name on it um i think it's inference time computer inference time i think they call it test time compute but basically it just means using more compute at the moment when you when the request comes into the llm as opposed to just a call the llm it, it makes its response and it returns that response you could do this with code without o1 for basically since gpt4 came out okay so why will they underwhelm? Uh, why will, for the most part, the vast majority of them, if not uh, almost all of them, will uh, uh, underperform when you compare them to the right way to do it, which I'm gonna explain. Um, first of all, I think there is an underestimation of what AI agents are capable of um, and what they can actually do. And this might sound weird considering I'm saying, uh, and, and I'm gonna say in other places that AI agents aren't quite what people are what uh, what people are saying they're cracked up to be. I think a lot of the tech industry thinks that the the direction that virtually all the value in LMs will go is to AI agents. I disagree. Um, there's a lot of not, it's a very chat uh, focused perspective, um, which is understandable because most everybody uses AI through the large language models through a chat perspective. But there's a lot more that AI can do. Or large language models can do beyond chat. So it's actually uh, an incorrect perspective on what LLMs are capable of. Um, but also um, there is a lack of understanding even in tech for how to build good AI agents. They're still struggling with it when the tools are already there. The tools to build great, good AI agents have been there since GPT-4 and they have failed to do it. And, it, and it, it's, because, it's for a variety of reasons. And as we get into how to build it correctly, deeper into this video, you'll, it'll make more sense. So if people in Silicon Valley, if, if nerds out there who, who actually are trying to study, their job is to be in technology, are not able to build good AI agents, what makes you think some guy off the street, some plumber is going to be able to build a really good AI agent? 
maybe with a really simple thing, simple, very, very simple use case, it is possible, but uh, to build something, okay. But what a professional can do, what a professional software developer can do with the right mindset, right architecture is going to far surpass what any regular person can do every single time. And maybe the, what the regular person can do is enough for certain use cases, but it will always be better when somebody uh, like who has software development experience builds it. Okay, so LLMs can't interpret and build everything. I think some of the people, their answer is like, well, I know it's going to be AI agents are going to be able to do complicated things, but they're going to be able to take in the everyman language, the normal man language, and interpret it into the instructions that are needed to, to do what needs to get done. This is, is false. Um, LLMs have very serious limitations. They get things wrong a lot. But then, like a lot of this human, even if we assume LLMs just get way, way better, which I think is a dubious assumption at this point, um, but even if we assume that, many of the things that need to be built into the, into the, into the, uh, into the AI agent, uh, many of the decisions that a human would make have nothing to do with the LLM intelligence. So you would need to know the, the context for which you're trying to solve the specific use case. Again, this is not necessarily, has nothing to do with intelligence, it has to do with the specifics of the scenario and the problems you're trying to solve. That you can't, that the LLM can't just guess. There's so many different angles here. Maybe you could build something that gets a little bit closer by through like some sort of AI agent or LLM question and answer process, but that is still fundamentally flawed and that it's very limited and that it will not be able to really take you uh, outside of or very far outside of its training set. Um, that is very much incomplete, but really just thinking about this, we're trying to say amateurs will build complex things. Um, and while there are examples in history of that happening, that's the exception, not the rule. Like try to build your own phone or, you know, an amateur who knows nothing about computers trying to build their own computer or trying to build your own car. Um, there are, uh, it's just not as good. You're just not going to be able to build it as good as somebody who d builds cars day in and day out. And that's their job. That's their life for 30 years. You think you can build a better car than them? Uh, no. You, you, in most cases, you cannot, and especially as you get, you know, there are certain professions where you could probably do some of the aspects of it pretty quickly and easily. What makes you think AI agents fall into the simple category? What makes you think or AI and large language models fall in the simple category? Again, people in tech still don't understand how to do this well. What makes you think a regular person is going to be able to do this really well? Um, and I just, I think it's going to be 100x plus what a, a professional can do, especially as you get into the more complex use cases, you need a professional. So how do you build these properly? Max power. <laughs> so uh, first of all, this is, this is the issue that has been pervasive in tech. I heard somebody who's well-funded, supposedly knows a lot about AI agents. He builds a product that make, enables you to make AI agents. And his definition of an AI agent was an LLM on a loop. This is a terrible definition. This is extremely limiting and you will have very poor results with AI agents. But this, there, there's a lot of group think going on where what they're trying to do is they're trying to lean, lean too heavily on the LM. Like again, it's just an LM on a loop. That's incorrect. Um, and, st and they're trying to push as much of the solution as possible into the LM. And that's what happens when you try to put on a loop. It's more like they're focusing on the problem and they're putting the LLM at the center and then they're putting the things around it. And what ends up happening is you try to push as much of the solution in there, which dramatically reduces the reliability and its ability to solve problems well. So it's a kind of a, it's, it's kind of a, uh, an accuracy and a uh, sort of like an accuracy versus precision scenario. Um, where there's two aspects that you're, you're punishing yourself on. And while it seems cool, this, this seems like a really neat way to go about doing it because um, you're leaning on the LLMs and people and you have companies like OpenAI that are saying, oh, well, we'll just be able to solve that in the next, in the next iteration. Don't worry, we're going to solve all your use case problems and you can just lean on our models, which is extremely self-serving for them and, and very, very inaccurate. This is so obviously not true. Even if there the, there were, were was not a slowing down significantly of the LM technology, even if I believed that there was going to be a GPT seven, if they had 
three more orders of magnitude or more of improvements to make the LMs, they still would not be able to handle all the use cases. That is bananas. It's so obviously wrong. What the right way to do it is to actually pull as much of the solution out of the LMs. And then what you actually do is, it, it, and, and even pick apart the things that you're trying to ask the LM to do to only ask them to do one key thing at one key point that you couldn't otherwise solve elsewhere. Basically, you just make AI powered software systems by software developers, okay? Where you use actually as much deterministic, classic, non random, non AI coding as much as possible. And this gives you reliability, this gives you speed, and this, and this reduces your costs. This is far more practical, but most importantly, the reliability. You're asking the LMs to do like as, as little as possible and, and no more. So you can also, uh, and, and there's a lot you could do with this. When you pull out this paradigm, instead of waiting for the next best models to come out, do you need O2 to build your model? You, you actually enable yourself to reduce, you, you, you use the smallest, least powerful model at each step that, that gets the job done. And a lot of times you could maybe just use like a fine tuned GPT 3.5 to be fast and inexpensive or an open source model in a lot of these cases to it's specific aspects of the AI agent. And it won't be calling one LLM with one prompt over and over again, or, or, or like slight variations of the prompt. Maybe there's some dyna dynamic aspects of it. You'll be calling, you know, when we've built AI agents before, we're calling LLMs in a variety of different ways. We're calling multiple different LLMs with very different prompts at very different places to do very different things. Uh, and there's a lot of cool places within software that you can use LLMs to create a, a solution. Um, and chat is only one part of this. This is, I, I mentioned this before, the very narrow chat bot perspective um, does not help. And, and the sooner that you can understand that there's so much more that LLMs can do that goes beyond chat, the easier this will be to understand and, and that you'll go into the, the correct framework. Um, and so this is where like I, when we built our AI agents would use LLMs in like 10 or 12 different places and then only like two or three of those were chat. Okay. So that, that kind of gives you the, you know, a little bit of perspective on going outside of chat. It's not just about chat, um, uh, logic, data flows, algorithms, etc., uh, are all needed for specific use cases. That are, and they're specific to those use cases. And who does these things? Professional software developers. I've drawn various versions of how to actually build uh, AI powered software, uh, which AI agents are a subset of uh, correctly in various other places. If you'd like me to draw it again or give some, shoot some, an updated video on that, uh, please leave a comment below. Um, hopefully this was helpful um, to understanding where things will go and what what you're going to be capable of um, and what we're going to be capable of and, and putting you on what I consider to be the right path based upon uh, our R&D and our actually building real world practical solutions instead of the massive amounts of hand waving and really big guesses based upon gut feel and based upon Really, there's like a few handful of thought leaders that say something in Silicon Valley and it percolates through there with lots of groupthink where they just kind of take it as um, as gospel and they don't really question it. They don't really understand it. They're not really working with the technology. And so, uh, you know, speaking of like like Sam Altman is a, a, a major uh, factor here, obviously, as people should listen to him, but they, they kind of turn off their thinking or they don't have the experience of actually working with the technology to really think differently. They, they can't argue with him, uh, but he has a very uh, specific perspective. It, even at, at best case scenario, he has his own unique perspective on this, um, but there's major incentives for him to push things that are very, that, that kind of put their work, their product, which is the, which is the models themselves, that's their core product at the center of these solutions. And that's that's part of the problem here. As, as long as that keeps happening, this will keep this will keep happening and you'll have so many companies and so many people trying to do this and failing miserably or leaving 99 plus percent of the opportunity on the table. Anyway, let me know what you think. 
Please give a like and subscribe if you're still with me. Please, uh, you know, I'm happy to discuss this. If there's something you think I missed or, or you think I'm wrong in some ways, I'm happy to discuss. Please, I'll respond to you in the comments. Appreciate all of you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.